This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, and we are at episode three. Coming up, we discuss why diets don't work. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. We're glad you're back. And if you've missed episode one and two, oh, you've missed good stuff. So you can go back and listen to those. This is a podcast that is dedicated to navigating how we can all improve our health, our well-being. We can start with small habits. We can get great habits that just turn into ritual. And we can start implementing all of that stuff, great stuff today. I'm Chuck Gatica. I'm your host. Each week, we sit down with a certified health expert from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, and we will take on topics like nutrition and well-being, stress reduction, sometimes all at the same time. And today, we're going to be talking about why diets don't work, but our expert who's here with us again, Grace DeRosha. Grace is a registered dietitian, certified health coach at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, and she's a featured blogger right here at A Healthier Michigan. She's a lover of food, lover of life, loves her family, mommy of two, and she's very passionate as a teacher for all of us here. Graduated from MSU with a Bachelor of Science in Dietetics and a uh, Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology. She's also got an MBA from Wayne State University and just a joy to see. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. That's one heck of an intro. Well, you've got lots of great credentials, but you know, you are a great teacher because you do it in such a sane way. I mean, it's just... For all of us who, we hear so much stuff coming at us, right? It's just the noise of life about diets and what to eat. And and so that's the, a, a really good question here about diets. Why don't they work? I think there's so many different reasons why a diet doesn't work. And I know we kind of touched on this in episode mm-hmm. one. The word diet itself now has this connotation of having a beginning and an end. You yeah. know, there's diets like Whole30. You only do it for 30 days and then and then what? right. That's what I want to ask. Right. And then what happens? Yeah. You do whatever, or you've deprived yourself so much with a particular kind of diet that once you're off the diet, then those foods become evil. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and how does that make someone feel? And don't we crave chocolate cake with icing, even if it is evil? I mean, then when you go for it, you eat half the cake instead of that little slice to satisfy your palate. Well, and if, let me ask you, what's your favorite, favorite food in the whole world? Favorite food in the whole world would have to... A steak probably ranks up there, although I don't eat it much. But like a, if I had to be honest, just a, uh, a piece of chicken that could be lightly breaded and put in a pan. I mean, I love chicken. I don't know why. I just love it. So what if I said to you, you can never have chicken again? That'd be bad news. Right. And one, you wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two, you wouldn't like me. And three, it doesn't make sense for your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If I said, now you have to be a vegan. that's not going to work because you love chicken. Um, And that's what I see happen often with a lot of these different diets. One, there's an author that wrote a book to tell you to cut out something. So think about it this way. We just talked about food groups and macronutrients and micronutrients. If you have all of that, like that wide spectrum of food that is offered to us that Mm -hmm. can fuel our body the right way and help us live healthy. If I said you have to cut out three of those food groups, Right. Of course, you're going to lose weight if that's someone's goal because you're cutting out all those calories from those food groups. But then what happens? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's research that shows that 95% of diets fail. 95%. So this whole idea, this kind of running gag that I'm just going to start my diet on Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why that actually is happening because 95% of last week's diets failed. Exactly. Yeah. And then the 5% of people that have some success when it comes to weight loss and diets, in five years, they have regained weight back, all of it, and then some usually. Yeah. So a third to two thirds of the people gain more than where they were at when they started their so-called diet. So is there something outside of the balance that I, you know, you've said this in really the first two episodes and now already in this one, the the idea that if we're balancing through the day, the macronutrients, right, the protein and the carbs and the fat, and then we're also into the micronutrients. So we're getting things that give us this rainbow of color. And I mean, you've really educated me in just the past couple episodes. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing a pretty good job of eating berries and different kinds of veggies. So if I'm balancing, is that a good enough diet or what can we do that we actually know does work? So you mentioned your app. I think it's really important to be able to take a step back, look, assess at where we're at, Uh, how we're doing, 
what might be missing. Instead of saying, I have to cut out everything, mm-hmm. this is evil, this is bad, you can't have it anymore. Why, why don't we look at what we need to add in? Why don't we take note of how we're doing today mm-hmm. and say, you know what, according to this, you know, when I talk to my doctor, I don't get enough choline for brain health. Maybe I should be having the egg yolks because egg yolks have choline. Okay. Whatever, are, whatever it might are be. Are truly the perfect food? I mean, I hear that phrase being said, as long as you're not going crazy with them. I, yeah. I'm a fan of eggs. You and are. I want people to eat the whole egg most mm-hmm. of the time, unless mm-hmm. they're, you know, case by case okay. with people that have scenarios yeah. where they shouldn't yeah. or should maybe have a whole egg and an egg white if they instead of two mm-hmm. whole eggs, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. But I'm a fan of the whole egg. Okay. That's good to know because, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's sane advice. Right. Yeah. And obviously that's for the general public. Again, if someone has really, really high cholesterol and needs to be very strict, then we would have to look at that. But you know, when you say look at the different food groups and add things in that uh, you're missing from your diet, some of the stuff you're asking us to add in doesn't really impact the bottom line much. The other day, I'm, I'm uh, making a salad. I'm throwing in spinach. We've got fresh strawberries. It's a great season, right? And I cut up strawberries, and I don't know exactly, but I go to my little app, and I'm thinking, that's about a quarter cup of sliced strawberries. And it says something like crazy, like 37 calories. And yeah. I'm like, what? I mean, it, between that and the spinach and the stuff I added, it was almost non-existent in terms of impact on my diet. Yes. But all the good stuff I was getting was incredible. Yes. And I'm so glad that you brought that up, because I think it's important to realize that sometimes what we're adding in is going to give us more benefit than what we might be trying to take out. Oh, yeah. So don't necessarily cut back on having that chicken on the salad, but just add all the other good stuff. And maybe you need the protein. Right, right. You know, people that are working out and trying to build lean muscle might be needing some of these things. And we know, I feel like poor carbs, carbs get such a bad rap, Yeah. you know? And I think if people realize that carbs help balance hormones... Carbs help our central nervous system and our brain. Don't they give you energy yep. too? Like when you're feeling through the day, like wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I mean, carbs can help right. boost you. And carbs, yeah. Carbs are our main source of fast acting energy. Mm-hmm. Did you like my sound effect? I did. Yeah, that was a, a good it's one. A big, it's a big time show. I we felt got... that. Like that's my like stop the slump around 3 p.m. It's Is it really? Wah. Yeah. What do you noise. grab then? So what do you do to stop a slump? Um, Actually, you're going to like this. I, I'm going to give you guys my trick. And I know you had this for, for breakfast the other day. So... I will cut an apple. Okay. And then, you know, you have those fancy cutters where you yeah, can cut in the, the core. core yep. out, yeah. So then I take the core out. Are you ready for this? And then I put peanut butter in there. And then you put a rubber band around the apple. Yeah. And then you have apple and peanut butter all in one thing. And you didn't have to use a container or seven oh, containers. Oh, you just take it on the go. And yeah, and you have the, just oh, that rubber band holds it together. And that's your, and yeah, that, that's your That's one of my favorites. Holder. I do love, I make, I love to make my own little like uh, energy bites. So okay. I'll put different kinds of nuts or different kinds of dried fruit in that. Yeah. Trail mix. So let me just, uh, I've admitted this already in various ways the first couple episodes. I've been on a lot of different diets my whole life. When I was a kid, I was a teenage, young teen. And I remember there were moms in the neighborhood, not my mom, but my buddy's mom went to this thing. It was called Tops, Take Off Pounds Sensibly. It's one of the groups that you go to, right? And you maybe they still exist. I don't know. And you would go and you would stand on the scale and you'd lose two and a half pounds and everybody would applaud. And then at the end of the meeting, all the moms, it was mainly moms and a couple of us teen boys, would all go out for lasagna. And I thought, oh my gosh, this diet is never going to work, you know. But there, there's always a way around a diet. Yeah. What is it that we can do where we see diets working? But I guess the the ultimate question is, why don't they work? It's not just us. Is it just our psychology? Or is it all this no. information we're being pounded And I'm with? so, ugh, you. I feel like you're reading my mind. So one of the things I wrote down was the social and community aspect of different things uh-huh. regarding diet. Mm-hmm. So part of that is, hey, Sally, did you see that new, have you heard about that new ketogenic diet? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I heard that so-and-so is doing it and it's supposed to just burn fat right off, but you can't have any carbohydrates on it. (laughs) Yeah. But let's do it together. Right. So social connection becomes social contagion, right? You're influencing people around you. And you would hope that when we become influencers, it's for good reason. Yes. But sometimes like this, maybe you're taking somebody down a path you didn't even know won't work. I had I had a girlfriend for at Christmas time. She would always buy whatever the latest diet book was for everyone in our circle of friends except for me. 
because uh, she knew <laughs> that I wasn't <laughs> going to accept what that was. Yeah. And then it, and it, I, it was foolproof. Every time Chuck, this would, they would all start this thing because it was Christmas. So then going into the new year, <laughs> they'd start this. And then by February, I'm getting text messages from all of them. Like, this isn't working. I hate this. This one tells me I can't have any, I can't even have quinoa. This can't be right. And I'm like, you knew from the get-go that it wasn't going to be right. I, it, this has happened three times. You knew this was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And you're, now you're miserable. <laughs> but you know, social contagion, this idea that you're influencing others can also have a positive spin. Yes. I've seen this because my wife, Susan, is, I, I, I've always kidded her, you could walk up and get a Cinnabon and she could put butter on it and she will eat it and the next morning because she weighs every day. I hate my scale. But anyway, she will get on it every day and she will say, oh, I lost a pound. And I'd be, oh my gosh, I don't even <laughs> understand your makeup, your DNA, your genes of how this works. So now she sees me with this app. And she said it again to me just two days ago. She said, when I first saw you inputting stuff at a restaurant, or I thought, this is really disturbing to me, that we have to go to a store and you're scanning things. And then she says to me about three months ago, you know, I want to download that app. It's free. And I'm going to start using it. And she only wanted to take off like four or five pounds. And sure enough, very slowly, because it's just sane, right. it comes off. She said, now I'm paying attention to everything, mm -hmm. which is going to benefit the kids and our grandkids when they come over. So I have seen the positive influence of yes. going from just being socially connected to now I influence her. Yes. And I, and yeah, and there is definitely a flip side to that. I think having like an accountability partner for exercising and talking about new recipes with your friends can definitely help inspire. Mm. Um, and and we, know, we know there is research behind that, that healthier people hang out with healthier people because we influence each other in that respect. So that's even good if you want to go for walks after dinner. Mm -hmm. Find a couple neighbors and go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or if you, people that want to quit smoking together. We see that often too. In a household, if, if the couple continues to smoke together, they're going to continue to smoke together. But if they decide that they're going to quit, they have each other to piggyback off of, mm -hmm. you know, the trials and turbulations of what it might look like, what works for them, what doesn't. In a way, you could become a coach yeah. for your spouse or your friend, Absolutely. right? Or vice versa. Right. You don't have to be a dietitian or on the podcast to be able to help someone yeah. that you love. And in the meantime... You know, when one teaches to learn, or many learn, they say. Yeah. So you're also helping yourself. So what other things work? Let's concentrate on the positive. What yes. are some things we could instill today that we could actually get working for us? I want to remind people that you don't have to make every change in the world today. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to grow into the healthy habit and piggyback off of that, right? Maybe you know it's something as simple as, I know I don't drink enough water. Mm-hmm. Um, what can I do that can help myself do that? So maybe it's you mark your water bottle with times so that by this time you have to drink this much. I should do that. Yeah. So that's interesting. I want to say that again. Or your could do that as well. I put little hash marks. Yep, with different times on the oh. water bottle. So by, you know, 9 a.m. you have to be down this far. By gotcha. 11 a.m. you have to be down this far. By. You know, they have a bottle. Have you seen the one that flashes? No. Oh, Yeah. There's one of those, uh, you know, BPA-free bottles, yeah. right? It looks like the thing you wash. You just fill it up with good water. And it's got a little LED light in the top. And every day you can program it, and it starts to flash in the lid. And I saw this happening, and I thought, why is your water bottle flashing? Oh, I have to go drink water now. It tells you when to drink water. I that's thought amazing. that's brilliant. Yeah. So, again, there's different accountability checks with different things yeah. that can help remind you. Maybe it's the app. Maybe it's talking with your girlfriends about what can we do to help each other get our fruits and vegetables in? What can we do to make sure that we're having some self-love, self-care time for ourselves? Maybe it's reading a body positive book together and then having book club about it mm -hmm. and then doing things in that nature that can help spur good, healthy changes that can last for the long haul. And when I see your blog posts, and I know there are others, but when I see, you've got some great, rich content there. So we could encourage people to check out a blog because when I look at your blog, there are takeaways. Yes. There are things that we can do right away because those kind of things can say, you know, I can do that. Right. I need encouragement sometimes that I know I can actually do it. 
Yeah, that there's ideas. And I think this is important. A reminder that everyone's body is not the same. Have you ever seen, I'm going to tell the people, there is this uh, video, it's called Poodle Science. Okay. And it talks about how every dog is in a poodle, right? Right. So if a poodle is telling you a bull mastiff <laughs> yeah. that you need to do X, Y, and Z according to their book to lose weight or to be your healthiest self, because I don't think does health, well, I'm going to ask out loud, but I, I have an answer. Health, <laughs> does health equal weight loss? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, right? right? right. Because maybe I'm a bull mastiff and you're a poodle. <laughs> right. But there are certain benchmarks. I mean, if you yes. see somebody, or if you are, or if you have been, you know, I weighed a lot more when I was a teenage kid. You know that there are certain things as you age that if you're carrying a ton of weight, that right. can influence your joints and your tendons. And, you know, so there yes. are some things that are... Yeah. So I would say, yeah, obviously like overweight and obesity but I know is what an, you mean. Issue, yeah. an issue and impact on health, definitely. Yeah. And everybody's metabolism is different. This right. is so much based on context. And if you don't get to know yourself... Right. Which, you know, the breathing exercise you did last episode, some of those things where you get to know yourself, even in a brief few seconds, is helpful to establish what you're going to do. Right. And so the only reason why I bring up poodle science, because then you can be in tune with who you are. Are you a poodle? Mm -hmm. Are you a chihuahua? Are you a bull mastiff? Are <laughs> yeah. you, you know, right. maybe you're a giraffe. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. And allowing yourself to be your healthiest self, you know, hopefully accomplishing weight loss goals that can help keep you healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But then also focusing on different things like maybe I need to cut out extra sodium because my blood pressure is creeping up. Yeah. Maybe I need to reduce some stress with doing some exercise and being more mindful. Maybe I need to put down the cell phone and stop looking on Instagram at supermodels because that's not good for my psyche. <laughs> I have to do that too? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but the thing is that you're you're giving us some information that really leads me to be encouraged that we sometimes don't want to focus on baby steps. Right. And baby steps are okay. Because yes. somewhere I had somebody say to me, this is not a joke, I was in the midst of losing some weight recently, and I had lost nine pounds. Now, relative to how much I want to lose, that was a pretty significant chunk yeah, of weight. Yeah, that's awesome. The person who says to me, oh, well, that's nothing. They have a, They have a need to lose a lot more. And I thought... Well, first of all, that was discouraging. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I thought, no, that's, for me, that was a great goal. I'm actually right. happy that it, this has happened, and it happened gradually, and it's right. staying off. But you have to be careful you don't get Debbie Downers around you, too. I know. You know. Yeah. We need to stay positive. Let's and, coach each other. And I should say that, too. Some of these diets may be a kickstart for someone to get on the right track. Yeah. They, they may not all be evil and overwhelming. It might be somewhere that someone needs to start at that point with that very structured look at food to get them started down their right path. You know, so it's not always all bad all the time. Good advice. I think I would be a Siberian Husky. I mean, I know <laughs> I would shed a lot, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Good to have you back for episode three. We're glad you're here too. Thanks for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you like the show, you want to know more, Check out Grace's blog. Check out all the podcast episodes at a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. A healthiermichigan.org slash podcast. You can put a review there, a rating on iTunes or Stitcher. All the new episodes, you can get them on your smartphone, on your tablet. Be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher, for, or you can use your favorite uh, podcast app as well. Next week, Grace is back. Uh, and then we've got some other great guests lined up as well for the future as we continue talking about all kinds of different parts of your health and wellness. Next week, we will talk about the importance of gut health. These are major headline generating uh, things, you know, talking about your gut, what's going on inside. And yes, you can correct what isn't working. We'll see you next time.